My friends, it is grave times here on the Hermitcraft server. It's been far too long since another soul has been demised. And in our last episode, we attempted to drown the Mumbo Jumbo with the aid of poisonous puffer fish, but unfortunately he saw the trap before he even got a chance to swim with the fishes. I've also received word that the tinfoil chef has foiled our plans, of all things. He found the zombies and it turns out that the totems of undying were no match for him and his sword, and so that trap failed as well. The good news is, I haven't seen the Doctor online, and I'm working on a way to lure him onto the server because our puffer fish are still here intact, and we have a chance of killing the Doctor if he goes up the water stream, but we'll have to wait and see what happens. And as it always was, it is up to us, the souls of the undead, to devise the plans to demise the living, we really need to step up our game, and that is what the Dead Quarters is all about. And we have actually mustered a lot of interest from the Hermits. Several of them have been over here in the graveyard poking around, and just the other day, Grian actually flew up to the Dead Quarters, very curious as to what's going on over here. So we will spark their interest with the promise of a bounty of the highest order. On the top floor of the Dead Quarters, we are going to have a list of all of our traps and secrets hidden around the server, which would be most valuable to a hermit who wishes to stay alive. However, the hallways will be aligned with all sorts of tricks, traps and secrets for these hermits to figure out and maybe will demise a few souls on the way. To get through the first floor of the Dead Quarters, they're going to have to undertake the challenge that Tango is working on in his map room. And we could take a hint from the block palette here. This is a beautiful aesthetic for the Dead Quarters. And Tango will be devising challenges in and around the graveyard in which the alive souls will have to take on to figure out the secrets of the first floor. At the other end of the wing, Jevin has worked on an armory where our weapons and our armors will be stored and of course secrets, hints and clues and maybe a trap or two. I like the way that that rhymed. <laughs> totally wasn't planned. And Impulse put together this gorgeous little storage room right here for such a small space. He has smashed in all sorts of details which I really like and of course again it's going to be filled with hints and clues. So then on the second floor, we have the Demise Wing over here. This room is like a shrine for each of the alive hermits, and it's got a kind of ominous vibe to it, and I think it's that black ceiling up there that just makes it feel kind of eerie. And what's this? Iskow, a.k.a. the Swedish Mafia. That's brilliant. B-dubs, a.k.a. big boy B-dubs. Mumbo, a.k.a. Agent Spoon. That's absolutely brilliant. So Cub Fan put together this room, and as you can see, there are levers. So when a hermit demises, redstone things will be happening. And you know Cub and redstone, it's going to be good. Also, I really like this sign. I am not going to go through that door or even bother opening it. Now, before this floor of the dead quarters can be loaded up with its tricks, traps, and secrets, we've got two more rooms over here. Tango will be taking care of Tango's parlor room, and I will be constructing the valuables room which is going to fill up this space here. Look at that name tag down there. It's Tango. He's working on the room below me and he popped up to say that he had plans for his parlor room to take up the space to the left. Now what I had envisioned was a balcony and then going down some steps to the right into the room that you would initially look over. But I'm glad Tango was on because I wouldn't want to interfere with his plans. So what we're going to do is roll this back into this space. But as you can see, the room or the wall even here is really close to this. So we're probably going to have to ditch the whole balcony idea. But at least you'll look down into the room. I like this. You know, a challenge is being provided by having limited space. Because as we look down here, there really is very little. These are the floor blocks that we have available to us. So now I'm looking into this space like, oh, we could put a room in that spot or we could take advantage of the space going on here. So there are certainly places to put things. Look at my chess monsters. You know I've been at work, right? I think I've got the shape sorted out here. It's just all a little bit dark and gloomy at the moment. However, I do want it to feel like this. I want to put my light sources over the back of this little room so that the player is kind of drawn into this space. But I'll throw down some torches so you can see what I've done, a mix of nether bricks, we've got some wood, and these are actually the blocks that are part of the outside wall, so I've had to incorporate that. First things first, we're actually going to put in a mini aquarium with some puffer fish, and Tango is working on a trap for the floor down below. Luckily there's going to be just enough room here, so wait a minute, I'm going to put the blocks there. 
Yep, still okay, Tango. All good. Well, what am I thinking? This brown terracotta isn't very oceanic or exciting. I've got some kelp, though, to put in here, and this is heavily inspired by a fish tank I saw in Coralis' base. It was gorgeous. But if we put some puffer fish down there as well, they're probably not going to double up as a trap, are they? Nope. The blocks above mean that they won't do any damage. But anyway, I put in some aquatic colours back there, and it's looking a little more interesting. As for this room, I haven't gone overboard with the details. I'm leaving it kind of loose at the moment because we're going to come back here later and, of course, turn all of this into a puzzle. And then we have this little room down here. Again, not too much. I'm thinking what we'll probably end up doing is adding signs with clues or jokes on them. Maybe renaming some of these items as well so when the other players come in here there's lots to read and interact with. And then maybe what we can do as a clue is use the colour coding of this right here or the material coding to indicate to these totems. Now squeezed under Tango's parlour room we can actually have some redstone here so the reason that that is activated is because the totems are on the opposite side so maybe we could use them for a combination lock. Ah uh, yes there's also this it's not a trap. There is a deliberately left gap right here as you can see and uh, you can fall down it. <laughs> what I'm thinking is this should be removable, yep, and they would fall all the way down to this spot where I of course could put lava or fire. But what I've gone for is a wither rose. I don't even really think you can make out the bottom down there, so that's terrific. That's probably going to scare one or two of the living who venture this way. So that's the room. I think we did good with what we have available to us, and what I really like to do is fill up the chests, put signs on the walls, rename these items to quirky little jokes and whatnot to fit in and amongst the clues. So if you have any ideas for some quirky funny things we could rename and put in these places, let me know in the comments down below. I'll be looking down there for inspiration, so I thank you for helping. Well, after being locked up in that stuffy mansion for ages, I felt like I needed some fresh air and sunshine, and over here it looks like Sahara weren't too happy with our uh, pop-up advertisement. That has totally disappeared. But they are not stocked up. Zero stock still over here. And there are no new deals available over here? Look, nothing. Anyway, I'm getting a little distracted. I came here to go to the Hermitcraft Mall, uh, but also, this... <laughs> Traps are everywhere on this server. You've got to be very, very careful if you're still alive. So the reason I'm down here is to grab some iron. However, this shop right here, Deny Your Demise. I wonder who on earth built this. Absolutely genius shop that took the lives of Tango and Impulse. That's how they're now demised. Looks like the trap has been reset. So uh, definitely ain't going to go in there, right? I mean, I'm already dead, but I don't fancy dying again. Anyway, I've literally just run out of iron, so coming over here to stock up on some more. And we're back in the grim and cold graveyard, and popping into existence in front of us is a gorgeous building that Scar's been working on. I love this build palette. It looks amazing. And if you're wondering why it's floating, it's because Scar's going to build a mountain terrain underneath it to make it fit in. Really awesome stuff. Over here on this side we're going to do a little bit of building ourselves. and the reason that I wanted to get some iron blocks is because we're selling buckets. However, I've been thinking about how we've been doing these little building projects here and we should take a different approach this time. We're actually going to start off by building the floor and the insides and then what we'll go ahead and do is build the exterior around it. Exactly 64 iron blocks we used to create this, and it is supposed to represent a bucket, and it might be slightly too large for what I originally envisioned, but what we're going to do is actually fill in all of this, and then fill it up with lava, so it looks like a lava bucket. Then we'll put grass over the top of it. I said grass, I meant to say glass, can I give myself one off there, because I was literally holding a grass block. Let's just jump ahead. As you can see, the lava is in place. The bucket is a little bit smaller, and I'm actually going to lower all of this around it so you can see all of the bucket because it has been lowered down. And that's because of the height of the floor is just one block off of here, and I feel like any more than that would be a bit too much. So orange glass for the middle to really highlight the lava, and around the outsides of this room we're going to have black glass. Then down below, it's black concrete. And I've just had like a really awesome idea I want to put like pufferfish pixel art in here, and the pufferfish is too big. However, if we were to think of the baby pufferfish, 
then it's three blocks across the bottom it has like a nose in the middle and then it's got its eyes up here on the side and then the trick is to use some of these for its fins on its side some carpets I've grabbed a few more blocks here to make up the body and all we've got to do is pop that there and then it's got fins <laughs> kinda works kinda looks like a little baby puffer fish there we go tail and everything that's superb I just think the viewing angle isn't quite there let's put a couple of blocks below our feet yeah I think you need to look down on it a little bit so if it were two blocks lower and a little further back that would probably fit in just nicely and I think what we'll do is just have a window here so it's like in the swamp it's in a watery environment now what I'm going to do next is build with diorite and that's always controversial I'm also going to use birchwood and birchwood slabs and put together a block palette that is probably going to turn a lot of people off but I just love experimenting with building at the moment so what we're going to do is essentially have some pillars of diorite spaced out and then have diorite walls between them and I'm going to have to make the building itself wider than it currently is so these right here are going to be like our building beams and we're actually going to go a little bit bigger so let's hop on over and create a frame which the roof is going to be supported on so that is all good unless you hate dough right <laughs> uh, those blocks might be subject to change I'm not quite sure what we're going to do at the bottom there but I know that I want to fill up the walls like this which doesn't look particularly pretty from the outside uh, but it's just kind of what I want to go with actually if we look at that clearly from this side it doesn't really make too much of a difference so I think we are going to go with the walls there so there we go mirrored on both sides I've got absolutely no idea what's going to happen with these walls over here but next up it is our secret weapon the birch log yep that's right we're going to make our roof beams out of this stuff but don't worry most of it will be concealed we're also going to conceal the wood texture at the front by putting some stairs in which are underneath the block as well so until we put more blocks on it it's going to look something like this and I really do like the shape of it it just might be a bit tricky to get the roof to actually work here and I say that because I actually built this all a little bit too low across those bits so they've been raised and it kind of makes me feel maybe this build will get a little bit wider on either side anyway there's my birch slabs up top which are going to make up the roof it's probably not going to look so good when you see it from up above though however I do have this idea for like these staggered overhangs but I think I'll need to work on that idea a little bit more here's the other thing on the inside I'm gonna make the walls with these trapdoors like that they're gonna go over the walls I know it's kind of crazy but it's what I want to do and so now I think we'll just build the rest of this thing in a time-lapse We are just going to have to call this roof a placeholder. Now our building looks really cool from the front I think, but when you look at it from above it's not the same story and on a small scale it's alright but on a large scale it just becomes kind of flat and bland. Now I also played around with this idea of just throwing in random stair blocks that kind of break up the texture by adding little divots like so. But I think the better approach here is probably to redesign the roof as a whole. So I'm actually going to just undo those few blocks. I think I might make it a challenge to come back over here on a Christmas live stream that we're doing and just redesign the roof and maybe use some different materials. Also on the inside here, these stair blocks didn't work out either. I thought adding a little something extra might help, but I tried a few things and you know what? I just kind of prefer the room without. And so now it looks a little more clean and of course we're selling some lava buckets and puffer fish and all of that's been stocked up for the other hermits to come over here buy this stuff and use it in their traps now this episode is shorter than usual and that's because I have plans to record with a couple other hermits and then those plans kind of fell through and I need to upload this video because I'm not gonna have time to do anything for a couple of days really so it is what it is I can tell you however the first floor of this place has been sealed 
and is ready for living participants to enter. The, I was about to say Haunted Mansion. It's just got such a Haunted Mansion vibe. The Dead Quarters, yes, it's all ready to go. And as you can see, the banners are now cryptic clues as well. So, I have a question for you. Do you mind it when an episode is shorter than usual? Just let me know with a comment. As always, I thank you for doing that. Of course, while you're down there, leave a like. Thank you for supporting this series, and I'll see you soon with another one. Ciao for now. Bye-bye.